Okay, our scripture today from John 13, 12 through 17, is the title of Jesus' own words. Do you understand what I have done? And I want to set the framework for this scripture before I read it out loud. Jesus got up from dinner, and the disciples at the Last Supper were reclining. Uh, in those days, when they ate, they reclined. Uh, there was no s- such thing as fast food restaurants <laughs> in, in those days. There was no such thing as fast food. And I don't know if you've ever eaten an Italian meal with Italians or a Jewish meal with Jewish people. Eat slowly because it's going to go on forever. And, and you know, in, in some ways it's really good for you because you appreciate the food more. But that Last Supper, they ate the typical Palestinian way. It was slow. A bite here, a bite there, a lot of conversation, a lot of friendship. And so Jesus got up, put a towel around his waist like a servant and washed each of their feet. I'm, I'm constantly reminded I have a Kansas accent. We put an R in wash. It's wash. <laughs> and I'm constantly reminded about that. And I need to be because uh, that's a Kansas word. But he, I'll try to say it correctly. <laughs> he washed the disciples' feet. And I'm sure it really, really surprised them. Because that's what servants did. The teacher, the master, the rabbi, washing our feet, what's going on here? And when he came to Peter, Peter said, no, no, I need to wash your feet. Jesus said, no, we got to do it this way. And then Peter was always aware that he was a sinful person. You know, there's a lot of Christians and a lot of non-Christians that are not aware that they're sinful people. Peter was very, right from the beginning, he said, depart from me, God, I'm a sinful man. So Peter went along with Jesus, but he said, okay, wash my feet, but I need you to wash my hands and my face also. And Jesus said, no, 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 I'm just going to wash your feet. All of you will be clean because I'm doing a spiritual thing by washing your feet. And then when Jesus finished washing all the disciples' feet, this is where our scripture comes in. Then Jesus said, Do you understand what I have done to you? You address me as teacher and rabbi and master. And rightly so. That is what I am. So if I, the master and teacher and rabbi, have washed your feet, you must now wash each other's feet. And then he explains it further. I've laid down a pattern for you. What I've done, you do. I'm only pointing out the obvious. A servant is not ranked above his master. An employee doesn't give orders to the employer. If you understand what I'm telling you, act like it and live a blessed life. A normal person like you and me that works for a living, in the busy business world, many times our bosses don't really stand up for us like we wish they would. I've had all kinds of jobs, construction, firefighting, retail, you know, all kinds of work, agricultural, And in my lifetime, 
three bosses really stood up for me. And I remember them really, really thoroughly. I've already mentioned to you before about Major General Eugene Cross. He stood up for me and every single soldier from the bottom to the top in the 35th Infantry Division. That's 16,000 soldiers. He helped as many of them as possible. He was a, he was a servant. I had a, a psychiatrist at Menninger. I just loved that guy. And things really got difficult one time. And that psychiatrist stood up for me, Dr. Bishop stood up for me through every step of that difficult situation. Many, many bosses will leave you swinging out in the wind when it gets difficult. A good superintendent of schools won't do that. A good mayor won't do that, but, but many do. They don't stand up for their employees. But Jesus is the epitome of a suffering servant who is really our master and our Lord as well. And what Jesus is doing in this scripture, he's telling us what God is like. God loves you so much that if your feet are dirty, God will Kneel down like Jesus did and wash your feet. I don't know if, if you've ever studied reflexology or not, and I've mentioned this a few years earlier, but reflexology came to us from China and Egypt. And my old joke about the Chinese is more than a billion Chinese cannot be wrong. <laughs> a friend of mine is doing... Qigong and finds it incredibly relaxing spiritual exercise. And we in the West, what's Qigong? And I'm not going to go into that in a morning worship message, but look it up. But reflexology, when, when a person's feet, every toe, every arch, every corner of their foot is gently stroked, it affects every other part of your body. It, it's connected to nerves in every, from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. And we have no idea about that in the West, but centuries and centuries ago, the Chinese and the Egyptians, they knew that that was common knowledge. So there's something much deeper going on here. Jesus, the reason he said to Peter, you know, I just, I'll, your feet are all half the wash. I don't have to wash the rest of you like you want. When God touches your life, every single aspect of your life will be involved and be blessed. And so Jesus is saying, I'm giving you an example you may not fully understand what I'm doing right now, but I want you to act like I am acting. Care for other people. And what St. Paul would tell us, especially of the body of Christ. Care for other people like I'm caring for you. And he's saying, a servant is not ranked above his master. An employee does not give orders to the employer. Do what I'm doing. And this scripture comes with an incredible blessing. Do what I'm doing and live a blessed life. One of the secrets about the Christian life is when we pray for other people, 
when we care about other people, when our hearts go out to people like Jean, to people like Michael, as they've gone out this morning, our own lives will cause us to live what Jesus said here, live a blessed life. God's will is for us to love and serve other people and to live a blessed life. This is a pattern, Jesus said. I've laid down a pattern for you. What I've done, you do. In Horton First Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, we have a prayer list every single week of people that we know and love and of our men and women in the military that we're concerned about. When we genuinely pray for these folks and for our own needs, our lives are blessed, tremendously blessed. There's a little secret to <clears throat> in this passage. When we eat a meal together, that's a sign not only of friendship, it's a sign of a holy time. <clears throat> it's, it's really important that we remember that when we receive communion, this is a holy time in our lives. So, I would encourage you today, follow what Jesus says here. If you understand what I'm telling you, act like it. He even washed Doubting Thomas's feet. He even washed stubborn Peter's feet. He even washed egotistical James and John, who wanted to sit at his right hand and ride at his left. And if Judas would have been there, Jesus would have washed Judas' feet. Amen.